The moment an iron ore mine collapsed in southern Brazil has been caught on camera. Security video shows the muddy deluge engulfing the Vale Company's mine canteen and neighbouring buildings. An investigation is underway into what caused the collapse, which has left more than 300 people dead or missing. Five people have been arrested as part of the investigation. In terms of people missing and killed, this is Brazil's deadliest mining disaster on record. And the Vale Mining Company, which operated the dam, they said it will decommission 10 of its dams in Brazil, which represents 10% of the company's output. This is a security precaution, as they put it. But with this new government, waiting to slash environmental regulation and open more land to development and mining, we'll see what that really means. But what does this mining dam collapse mean in terms of its overall environmental impact? And what responsibility does the Brazilian government bear in it all? Joining me to discuss this is Fabiana Alves. She is climate and energy campaigner at Greenpeace Brazil. Thank you very much. So this, this, I mean, they, when you see the pictures of of, and the, and of what happened um, in Bumajano, um, they're horrendous and they're frightening to look at. But I'm curious, in a large perspective outside that town and what's happened since, what we know, what will be the health impact of this collapse on the people, on the animal life, on agriculture, on the environment? What, what, what are some of the things you're watching and worrying about? Yes, um, three years ago, uh, we had the same time, the same same type uh, of disaster uh, in Brazil, uh, very close uh, to Brumadinho, the the place that this disaster happened now in the same state, the state of Minas Gerais, and uh, the disaster was done by the same company, uh, which is Vale. This company, yes, this company killed 21 people uh, in the last time and made uh, a whole city completely disappear. And another one uh, had to be evacuated and reconstructed. None was done. None of the both cities that uh, needed to be reconstructed uh, was re was reconstructed. Um, the mud is a, a toxic mud. Uh, it's already there in the place of uh, the ancient um, disaster, uh, and they had uh, not uh, paid uh, what the government was charging for all the the mess they have done in the past. So what I can say right now is that uh, the trust in the company uh, is very low because they have not done what they had to do in the past. So let I, I, I have to see what they are going to do now. About the environmental impacts, uh, they are huge. The mud is toxic. So uh, there's a lot of iron uh, in the mud and manganese. Uh, these two, um, two components are very toxic. And this, the last time uh, Greenpeace uh, coordinated six different studies, independent studies, uh, to see uh, how was the impact, the environmental impact and the social impact, because uh, both things we have to remember are linked. And what uh, we saw there is that uh, the level of um, of uh, toxic in the in the mud was very high. So uh, that means that uh, the mud uh, is uh, is is affecting people that are in contact with it. Last time they killed a whole river, a whole river. We have we had a huge river. It's called the Dosi River. They have killed the entire river and everything that was around the river. Uh, they had not done the reforestation that they needed to do. Uh, and let's see how it's going to be now, because the mud is going to one of our biggest rivers in Brazil, which is São Francisco. And uh, we hope that uh, the mud stops uh, at a hydroelectric, uh, hydroelectric that we have in the middle of the way. No, but I so also we have I've also read that, this, that, that, that the, the way this toxic mud is moving, that, as you just said, affecting Brazil's largest river, going into this indigenous territory as well. And people have already yes. seen thousands of dead fish floating in the water. So, I mean, so do, what, what do you know? What do we know about the environmental impact so far? 
and, and what the effect could be in a larger area, if in fact it could? Well, uh, what we know from the past, from past experiences, um, it's going to impact everything that is around. It can contaminate the water and also uh, uh, the water on, on the underground. So if someone is taking water uh, from the underground, this water may be contaminated too. Uh, it's necessary uh, to do, uh, to examine the water, to see uh, how the water is. And it needs to be done uh, all the time, not just once, but uh, once in a month or even more times uh, to see how, uh, how these things are, are happening. Same thing for health impact. Uh, from now on, uh, we need to see how people that are close uh, to this toxic mud, uh, if they are representing any um, anything that uh, could uh, cause, uh, that could be a problem in their health. So everything, all, all these need to be uh, be close seen by the enterprise. Enterprises should be should be there to do that. So the, the, the president of Brazil, Bolsonaro, has said on Twitter that uh, he and his administration will do everything in their power to prevent more tragedies like this. Um, but he's also carrying out an agenda of environmental deregulation. And if, and, and when you look back at the history of the last 10 years, even with a rep, uh, an administration in Brazil that represented the people in a greater depth than, than Bolsonaro's does, uh, administration came from the left, you still could not regulate this industry. You couldn't stop it. So what's your response? What should be the response? And what's your response to Bolsonaro and all of this? Well, uh, Bolsonaro, um, uh, they, he used to be uh, in the Congress uh, uh, very close to ruralistas. Uh, those are uh, a part of the Congress that uh, tries to put laws that uh, makes uh, environmental license more flexible, so easy to uh, infrastructure structures can um, can be easily done. Uh, they want uh, to pass laws uh, on, on that. Uh, Bolsonaro uh, is uh, linked to, to to people in the government that uh, have already said that uh, environmental uh, people uh, are always exaggerating things. Um, they do not. Uh, they have de declared that uh, they they want uh, the country of a development and that environment has nothing to do with that so they he has a completely wrong way to see uh, what development development and economic means uh, for example if you see uh, everything that happened uh, people that uh, rivers that and all the the, the social uh, impact those impacts cause economic impacts too uh, that uh, they are not doing the count the right uh, accountability on that so we need to see uh, how he is going to to do the next steps uh, for that. So it was interesting. I was reading an article that, that showed these um, people scrawling on the walls um, in the town uh, that, uh, you said Valley? Is that how you say it? Valley? Yes, Valley. Valley. Valley is a, this is a recidivist murder prophet is what Valley is, is all about. Valley can kill you. So there were all these signs that were across in that town after this disaster took place. And I, I, so I'm, I'm wondering what kinds of environmental policy would actually have to be put in place to stop these kinds of disasters because more could be coming. Well, uh, environmental licenses are very important because that's uh, the moment that you say if it's okay or not okay to do um, a project, an uh, infrastructure project. So it's very important that the Brazil that Brazil has a, a, a very strong uh, legislation on that, and that all states follow it. So we don't have a, a competition between states to see uh, who gets uh, more uh, infrastructure and uh, who. Um, who gives more uh, to the companies uh, in, to have their to have them in their in their in their states? Uh, this is important, but uh, also it's also important is fiscalization. In Brazil, uh, we have uh, we have no fiscalizations of all dams that we have in Brazil. Uh, we have uh, more than 40 percent of the dam. They are they are not. Uh, we don't know where they are. Uh, there are no hmm. transparency. Uh, yes, there are no transparency of, of where they are and um, 
what are the risks they are causing. So we need the government to see that. Another thing is the fiscalization. It needs to be done regularly and it, it needs to be independent. We cannot accept anymore that enterprises um, hire the people that are uh, doing uh, the fiscalization in their dams. So these type of things can't happen anymore. O rio para o lá embaixo, lá naquele lugar lá que é o rio lá, ó, aquela Eu parte branca. Bom. Agora aqui é aquela entrada aqui do na entrada do o rio para o do Cogo do feijão. Ó. E ali é o parque que assim, onde tem uma de casa ali para cima ali. Ó. Senhores, é, é com imenso pesar que eu, eu preciso confirmar o rompimento nessa data uh, da barragem da Mina Feijão em Brumadinho, Minas Gerais. Uh, senhores, eu não tenho palavras para descrever o meu sofrimento, a minha enorme tristeza, o meu desaponto com o que acaba de acontecer. É algo... Uh, além e acima de qualquer coisa que eu pudesse imaginar. Quero dizer da minha solidariedade, da, a que a vale inteira vai fazer o que for possível e impossível para ajudar as pessoas que foram atingidas. É, é algo que me dói a alma. Tudo que eu não queria na minha vida era que algo do gênero acontecesse. Senhor, se a gente na Vale... A Ivana é uma empresa muito séria, a gente fez um esforço imenso do ponto de vista de é, é, fechar as nossas barragens da, na melhor condição possível imaginar, usamos toda a tecnologia, especialmente depois de Mariana. É uma lista infindável de ações que foram tomadas do ponto de vista de é, garantir a estabilidade e a segurança dessas barragens. Infelizmente, o rompimento aconteceu, isso é indesculpável, mas mesmo assim eu peço desculpas a todos os atingidos, a toda a sociedade brasileira, porque, e, e quero dizer que nós não mediremos esforços para enfrentar essa questão da forma como ela tem que ser enfrentada. Muito obrigado. Officials have suspended the search for survivors as a result of that um, dam that burst on Friday. Earlier, we were able to show you images of the rescue operations. They were able to pull people out of this muddy debris and that water that flowed through. But they say the chances of finding anyone alive at this stage are very slim. And because they have this other concern of another dam bursting, they have to put this process on hold. Some things to keep in mind. This dam that burst is linked to a uh, nearby mine. The agency that's responsible for it is concerned about the other dam as well. And when the dam burst, on Friday, not only were millions of tons of water and debris and all these foods uh, gushing out and they destroyed homes and buildings and roads, they've also destroyed a lot of the nearby vegetation and the farmland. So the concern is not only about saving lives at this stage, but it's also about the long-term environmental and health impact it's going to have. That's something we're going to be monitoring in the weeks and months ahead. But really the crisis now is to make sure the, the focus is to get people out of danger's way in case the other dam does burst. A nightmare scenario. How are they preparing for this possibility? So an evacuation order has gone out. Let's show you on a map where the area is that we're talking about. The town that's going to be affected is Brumadino, and that population stands at about 39,000. So they're sending out the evacuation order to the population there. They're doing it through loudspeakers, and they're telling the people to get out of the way, get to the highest possible ground. And so we're waiting for how many people have actually followed the orders. The last a news wire that came out, so there's no word on how many people have actually physically moved out of harm's way. The military has deployed a thousand soldiers along with sniffer dogs to help, not only in the primary rescue efforts, but in case this situation um, unfolds as well. And we also know that Israel is deploying a search and rescue team. About 130 soldiers, men and women, are on their way. They're also going to be bringing with them very sophisticated materials like cellular location equipment, drones, and naval sonars. They're intended to stay for a week. Their initial purpose was to help with the rescue operation. They might end up having to work with a secondary issue if, in fact, it unfolds. The first major national challenge for...
Now, we've confirmed that 40 people have been killed and at least 300 are still missing.